finding clients. So as we said, there are a number of ways of finding clients and there are a lot of prospective clients out there. So uh, these are just some ways that you can go into a networking events uh, is a really great way to find clients. Um, and there are so many, uh, wherever you are living and watching this, but for those who are on the Sunshine Coast, where we are, uh, there's some amazing um networking events related to industry that will help you find clients. So a really good one is LinkedIn Local, free event, free monthly event, and there are business owners there uh, every every month. Like the la I spoke at the last one, there would there would have been about 50. Um, and you just go there and meet people. You're not there to trying to sell, but you, people say, what do you do? And it's like you, you talk about what you do and then they get to know you and you say, oh, you know, I do free, freelance social media management and they ask you more and you exchange cards and, you know, connect on LinkedIn and, and then they start to notice you and then, you know, over time they will reach out when they need your, your services. Um, it's good to get involved with the different chambers of commerce. So every town will have a chamber of commerce and they have usually monthly events as well. And so these are just all business owners from that town get together and they tend to try and connect and use each other's services. So it's good to be part of that mix. And there, there are other things. There's a chambers of like, there's a young chamber of commerce as well. So um, Bronte Creswell, I think has, is very um, predominant in, in starting and, and making that happen. So she, I think she's on the board for that. And so that has younger business owners. And so again, trying to just use each other's services and connect in that way. Um, Sunshine Coast Business Women's Network. So for female business owners, and then Reboot Noosa is a dig it's about digital um, businesses. So again, just going there and, and meeting people and, and it might not even be the people that you meet there who become your customers, but it's more like then they know you, they can refer you to other people. So going to networking events is really important. Um, how, explain some of the ways that you find customers, Jesse. Yeah, so I've been to most of those networking events as well. And I think like people love that like you're a student because it's it, it's quite ballsy to like go as a student. And I think um, people are always like keen to hear like what you do and everything. So that's definitely one. Um, also, like personally, I found once I started and was just like putting up content on my like business Instagram, they just come to you like, not that that's the only way, but they do just come to you when you've got all your branding aligned. And for me, a huge one was actually like doing reels. I got so many messages, like even like clients from, I had one from New York, Canada, Sweden, um, New Zealand, and they all kind of want to work with just, I guess, like because of my personality in the reels or they liked it. Like, I don't know what it was, but it's crazy that that's the kind of way you can find clients these days. Um, but also like your community boards, like I know I'm from like Noosa, the Noosa area. So the Noosa community board is very active and people are always asking for different services on there. So just keeping an eye on them for when people might ask for social media help, or you can post it on your own, like a bit of a pitch, um, definitely offering for people that you, you might see they have a poor social media presence and you might offer it or like just reach out to different places even when like say you're a local at a cafe and you see that their social media is not great but you already kind of know the staff because you're there all the time like it's like those little connections and then honestly like once you start the word of mouth spreads like I had so many referrals from people that I'd done a little bit of work for recommending their friends or other business owners to me um so yeah it really just is that whole networking thing, regardless of whether you go to the networking events, it's definitely like building those relationships and doing a good job so that those people then refer you on. And it can be things like, um, even like Karen was saying, like I went to a few of the Reboot Noosa ones and a lot of them are actually social media agency owners. I think it's like um, Social Tap, Insight Social Media, um, or I think there's another two in there. 
but they're these like quite big agencies and they said that there's a huge gap for those smaller businesses. So they refer you people, you know what I mean? Um, and I definitely found with uni, like I think a lot of my lecturers, like Karen included, recommended clients to me because they saw that I was doing it at uni. So even just kind of showing to, to your lecturers that you're, you're, you're able to do it and you're keen, they'll, they'll have to give you opportunities, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And so if you let me know that, you are seeking clients, then it's, I, I put opportunities on our, in our Facebook groups, but often no one responds. <laughs> so um, I'll do that. But if I know someone, I'll put it in there. But if I know someone as well is keen, I'll just send it to them straight away as well. Because the thing is, I, I want that business owner to find someone. Um, so I don't, whether it's someone through the Facebook group or someone that I email, my, my whole goal is to set them up with someone who can help them and to also help one of our students find some work. So, um, you know, if I know that that's what you're, you're keen for, then that, that'll sort of help as well. So it's letting people know that you are looking to, um, yeah, looking for, for clients and then they will think of you when someone comes to them. And even other, um, like I've met a few friends that are bigger businesses but sole traders and they're, like I said before, they're always so busy. So if they have a client that, they would love to take on but they just don't have the capacity they'll often refer it to me because I've made that relationship with them and it doesn't have to be a professional relationship even if you kind of are making friends within that kind of community you can really build like a good even yeah like referral network type of thing where you all help each other you know yeah So in terms of taking on clients, particularly for the first time, my advice is to start small, start with one. <laughs> so because one, like when, if you're doing it for the first time, it'll help you to really refine your processes and um, before taking on more. So if you took on five clients straight up, like you'll just be out of your depth, but taking on one, it'll, it'll teach you about how to, um, liaise with that client, your client communication, how you're going to do your research. And, and it'll, it'll be such a learning experience doing that. And you'll gain confidence when you start to get results for them. And, um, and then you'll feel ready to, you know, to take on more and you'll, you'll have everything in place to be able to support more because the worst thing that you can do is promise things you can't deliver. So by, um, by, over what, what is it over promising and under delivering um you won't have a business for very long so what you need to do is um yeah start start with one and make sure that you give them a really great experience and then that will help with your word of mouth and gaining other clients as well and it'll also mean that um you're not disappointing clients because what some businesses do is they um they put a call out saying, I, you know, I want all this business, but then they don't have the resources to, to actually really support it. And then it ends up sort of biting, biting them um, in the, in the long run because they, they couldn't actually do what they said. So that's my advice is really start small. And um, as Jesse's written here, you know, taking on people that you know um, is also a good idea. Yeah, like I think I, I was working in a news agent um, during my first year and second year and they kind of said, oh, well, do you want to run our socials and just kind of you can like go, go off, do whatever you want with it. So it was a really good practice. And then I think we had like a beauty salon next door who we were quite friendly with the owner and she said, well, do you want to do mine as well? And I'll give you like some free beauty treatments every now and then. So I was like, okay, that's a good deal. So I got two clients that I could do whatever I wanted with. And it was really fun to kind of just learn the, of how I would do it, how I would plan stuff, um, keeping up with like, with the news, I don't like promotions coming up or sales. And then with the beauty salon, like kind of getting the inside info on what each um, service is. And I had a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings with her as well, which you definitely don't have to offer, but it's a good thing when you're starting out to kind of learn like, oh, should I offer one-on-one -on -one meetings with them once a month or should I just talk to them over email or like even those little things? So 
I think it's really good to start out with if it's not somewhere that you work, then a family friend might have a business or your family might run a business and just, and even with your own um, professional brand profile, like I said, like a business profile, just getting practice on those that you're kind of doing for free or for cheap and you're, you're learning as you go. The other thing is to manage expectations. So uh, this means that don't, and this is all about making promises. You have to remember that business owners really do not have a clue as to how long things take on social media. And to get any sort of decent results, you're really looking at consistent effort over between three and six months to really get like decent results. Of course, there are anomalies, but it takes time on social media to get results, to build a following, to um, build up the engagement and those sorts of things. Um, it's not going to happen overnight. And so you need to manage those expectations from, from the get-go. And a lot of agencies, they they ask people to sign up for three months or six months at the beginning because they're like, I can't, I can't show you any results until after that time that we, you know, that we actually put in the, the effort consistently. Yeah, the um the agencies I work for both have three month uh, contracts. So it's like you're locked in for the three months and then from there you can kind of choose to renew monthly or another six months or whatever you want. But a lot of agencies do big terms and it scares businesses. So I think three months is a really good number because it's like it's not that that long and it also gives you time to make a difference for their for their results basically. Yeah, that's right. And that leads on to the next thing. So Another question I'm asked from students who take on clients, they're like, what do I do now? And it's like, well, think about what you've learned in the social media courses. So the first thing you need to do, like particularly in um, the social media content curation and creation course, where the first time when you first got your client, you started your research and you began your research with them. Then you you audited their their social media presence. Um, you researched their audience. You researched their competitors, and then you developed the strategy for them. And that's that is the best way because that will inform all the things that you need to do. You, what channels they need to be on, what content you need to post, all of those things. And if you're giving them that say three month time frame getting the, the goal they want to achieve and then giving yourself realistic objectives to meet in that time. So making sure that you're not, again, over-promising what you can do and um, you're sticking to that and you've got your key messages there. You, you know exactly that's your plan of what you're going to do in that time frame and how you're going to achieve it. And then the next stage is to actually to implement it, creating, you know, that strategic content um, with the, where the captions and the, the visuals and whatever you choose to do or need to do uh, actually is there to support what's in that strategy. And yeah, keep in mind, um, again, with the under promise over deliver, like it goes both ways. You don't want to say you're charging them for a strategy for $200. If you're doing this much, much research and then it comes down to like the content, I always have to kind of ask myself, like, where do you stop? Like, you want to give them a, a, a good strategic um, content plan, but you, like, the other week I had a client ask me if I could, like, plan some reels for her and give her that. And I think you've got to think, like, should that be an extra service? Because that's a whole lot of work in itself. Um, and just figuring out those things and what works for you. Like I said before, like I charge separately for the the big strategies and the audits, but in the setup fee that I charge, I think it's good to do a little one, like that doesn't take up too much of your time, but you always need to have, I, I, I send them business questions and the questionnaire, um, if anyone wants a copy, I'm happy to like share, but it's goes through like who their target audience is and what their goals are. And then like Karen said, once you know their goals, like if their goals is to just grow their following on Instagram, then your job is to every week be like engaging and implementing ways to do that. But if it's sales, then you might suggest them to do ads to try, try and like drive that traffic to the website, you know? Yeah. And then of course the other part is measuring. So it's that, like measuring whether it's a weekly or a monthly just to see I mean we cover this in, in um, social media monitoring and measurement as well so what's working 
what's not working and um, and then how you can improve. And it's measuring what you're doing against those goals and smart objectives to make sure, you know, are we on track? Are we not on track? What we can, what can we do to keep getting better? So it's just, it's just that, that continual cycle. And I think the like evaluation part can be super simple. Like most small businesses that you'll, you'll be working with, they're not super savvy on social media. So like the simplest graph or the simplest um, stats impress them. Um, not that that's always the case, but it can be, you can keep it simple and you're literally just trying to show them how your work has moved towards their goal or reached their goal. So yeah, try and keep it simple based on the client, if that makes sense. Yeah. And so, you know, show them, show them the progress and then, and then also explain what does this actually mean? So this means that what we've been doing is working. So we're going to keep continuing or we're we're not moving fast enough. So we're going to try and do this. So yeah, but that, yeah, so that's, they're the key things. 